June is hot. Hello, this is Carrie O'Donnell from Tarot Soul Writer, and if you would like a personal reading with me, please go to my website, tarotsoulwriter.com, press book a session, and I would be happy to do a personal reading for you. It's time now for me to do June 2024, that forecast. It's taking me a bit of time to pull this all together. I feel like the further I'm getting into the year, the more I don't have a context. I feel like I might be missing some key events. So I'm doing my best to put this together. I'm going to explain to you the energy I'm getting, the messages, and what this possibly could be based on what I'm seeing, hearing, etc., and channeling on paper. Sometimes it's like a giant puzzle. It's like you get bits and pieces of information and you have to find a way to integrate it or put it all together. So the first thing that I'm getting for June is that June is hot. I wrote that down exactly. The words that I got were hot, on fire, and hot tempered. Now, I feel like this is going to represent a lot of things, both literally and metaphorically, as the month progresses. But we start to move to higher ground by the end of the month. So the first thing that I'm getting are earth changes. And I feel like this is part of the month of fire, I would like to call June, the month of fire, in a literal sense. What I'm getting is that the fire imagery connects to some wildfires in June, and I'm also seeing volcanic activity and earthquakes. I see two very specific parts of the U.S. that seem important with these types of changes. The first is the Wyoming-Idaho border um, up and around Yellowstone National Park. I'm getting a significant earthquake or some sort of seismic shift. No, nobody panic. It's not the big one. <laughs> I didn't, wasn't getting like the big explosion, but I am getting some significant activity in that area probably related to the giant supervolcano. We know that is a very vulnerable area, and I do feel we're going to see more activity or active issues in that area in June. I'm also getting fires, and it's also in that area, only a little bit more north, like the Idaho-Montana border into upper Canada, like where Calgary is, like going up um, in that area of Canada, they may be fire issues that begin in June. And this could continue as we move into the, to the hot summer, but I feel like we're going to see the beginning of that activity then. The other area, and I've been kind of obsessing about this uh, last night, but I saw Hawaii again. And I know before I had seen winds or something with tropical stuff, and I didn't, wasn't sure if it was the South or Hawaii. This time I was definitely seeing Hawaii, specifically between um, Molokai. I'm not sure if I, I said that right, but Molokai and Oahu. So they're like, I think the two island regions, and it was kind of like they were showing me both near the channel or, or the waters that connect it. And I guess what I'm feeling is there's either some sort of volcano activity there or some seismic activity there. Um, and it's like it may be on the island of Molokai, but it affects Oahu, something to that effect. It's like it, it happens in one place, but it affects the other. And I feel like it's a surprise. 
Like it's not something where we expected activity there. Scientists may have thought like that was either a dormant area or an area that hasn't had a lot of activity in the past. It's kind of like they have their eyes on another area, but it happens there. So there is a little bit of a surprise um, to whatever happens there. And, and it has to do with the volcanoes or um, earthquakes. Um, I'm, I know that those two things are interconnected in that part of the world in the ring of fire. Then I got New Hampshire and Vermont. And I think this is because I live in this area. Very often when I meditate on earth changes, if I have skin in the game, I tend to get visions because of my own safety or that of my family. I wrote, I feel there will be excessive flooding again in that area and not in just those two states, but also moving up into Canada where Quebec is in that area. Um, not so much Nova Scotia, which was interesting. For some reason I wasn't getting Maine into Nova Scotia as much as I was getting like New Hampshire and Vermont and then up. So I feel like I was more in Quebec uh, the Montreal area. I know that they had a lot of problem problems with flooding last year and I feel like this is going to be another summer in which there may be some excessive flooding in that area. This, that will be very noticeable in June. Next topic was women and I do believe this is also connected to the fire symbol because it's about being hot tempered. So women are still on the war path. I said that starting in February, women were going to start to protest and rise. There may have been deaths that are going to be highly publicized in that time period, that February, March time period that really get women um, to rally and begin to organize. Now, I wrote, women want revenge. Their ideals have turned sour. Their abilities are unused and not respected. I get restrictions. It is possible some states are doubling down on abortion restrictions or making them worse. Birth control could also be restricted in some states. There will be a strike of some sort around women's rights and issues. And I literally saw the word strike. And I got a very Lysistrata feel to it. For those people who are not up on their Greek tragedies or comedies, Lysistrata was a play in which the women try to end the Peloponnesian War by saying they will no longer have sex with their men. No sex until you stop war. So it becomes sort of a comic play, but I get that kind of feel like they're like women are going to prove their worth by stopping the work that they do. So I wrote, I'm not sure if this is nationwide. This could be in one state or one community, or it could be a social media campaign, like for one day. I know that that has happened with other causes. Like on this day, don't do X. And it could be something like that. And on that day or in that moment or in that small area, we are going to see women walking out or walking away from the work that they do to prove a point about how much they contribute to society. I wrote, through activism, women will unearth dark money also around fertility issues. Some corruption is exposed. So again, a lot of things are erupting around dark money and, and donors and people who want to control things for a certain agenda. And we're going to see that the politics behind these restrictions will have money behind it. I'm also seeing this image of women like witches on broomsticks. <laughs> and they were like flying. And I wrote, the women fly, freeing themselves from restraints. But they were kind of like, you ever see that little icon from Bewitched, that sitcom from the 60s? And you see, she's very pretty, but she has her hat and she's riding her broom. And I saw something like that. So it wasn't like an ugly old hag, but it was a sense of women embracing that stereotype. 
Like if I'm going to be divided between being a princess or being a witch, like there is no in between for a woman. I'm being put in a box. I'm either good or I'm bad. And there was just some sense that women were embracing that stereotype of being bad or being a witch and saying, oh, hell yeah, and I'm going to take my broomstick and go. So stay tuned. The women's marches, the women's fights are ongoing. And because this is all going to be in the public eye during a campaign season, I do feel like the Republicans are going to start sweating a bit. Then I got Nancy Pelosi. And I wrote, she is in the news in June. There could be an attack against her, either verbally or physically. So I'm, I wasn't quite sure, but I, I felt there was some sort of attack. Like she, she, I mean, she's not even Speaker of the House, but she seems to be arising during this sort of campaign season, um, demonized once again or brought to attention. And there could even be attacks against her. But I get those things are near miss, like I didn't hit my target. And I do think Nancy Pelosi is okay, physically, mentally, emotionally, but she is gonna pop up and be in the news during that month. I did get the border, the Mexican border, in the United States. Again, I know that we're gonna be heavily in campaigning time. And I feel like this may have something to do with that. I get, the past when children were separated at the border will be revisited again. The trauma will be revisited because of policies being discussed in the present. Victims of abuse may be standing up and their stories told. This could be election related and it benefits the Democrats. So I do feel like the Democrats are going on offensive here to twist around the whole border story and really go after the Republicans and what their policies really meant. And I think you're going to see a lot of first person accounts of what they experienced so that people can see that trauma front and center again for what it is. I also got the House of Representatives. I wrote, the split within the Republican Party seems clear in June. A divorce is finalized. So that Republican Party splitting that I had seen earlier, I feel like this is really solidified in some way, either metaphorically or literally. And I'm not sure, again, how this would happen in reality. This is where I feel like I don't have a context for this, but I st I, when they said the divorce is finalized, I kind of feel like, okay, we definitely have two very clear factions of the Republican Party. Because of the split, there seems to be a shift to a new Speaker of the House. And I get a Democrat, not a Republican. This seems to be related to a Trump-backed third-party disruption of normal proceedings. I'm not sure how this works in reality, but because of divided loyalties, Hakeem Jeffries may be taking power. So this is where it gets really confusing for me. I got, I think it was April, or so that Trump has to drop out of the presidential race. I mean, I, I really, I felt like I got that specifically. It could be related to things that are coming up in a trial situation. Now, as I continue, and I, I get him sort of like losing control, I feel like now that I'm in June, I still feel like he's preparing to be president. But I had gotten previously like he has to drop out. And then I got this Republican split. And I'm wondering if both things could be true. I'm wondering if he has to drop out was really about him, not like the Republicans don't want him. Like, that's the only thing I can think of. Like, when I am getting that information, it's as if I need to drop out of being a traditional Republican candidate. And I think that that may be the case. I feel like in June... I'm still getting a man who is trying to run for president. I even wrote down that he may be choosing a running mate, a female. So I wrote that specifically. So it, since we have a divorce situation and I keep getting third party interference, it could be that Trump can't or had to drop out as running as a Republican, but is trying to get support to run as a third party candidate.
There's definitely a sense that the MAGAs have split. And I do get a sense in June that he is still running to win. Um, it's so very strange because I feel like under this time, he's also going through a trial or, or trials. There might be multiple things happening during this period. And it's not good. It's not good. So I think a lot of this third party stuff is just chaos because I feel like in reality, like he thinks it's reality, but I feel like in reality, it's, it's not um, very effective, especially because at this time, because of those divided loyalties, I think it's going to be clear to people who take the side of being, okay, I'm just going to be a Liz Cheney Republican. Once they make that decision and they sort of flip, I feel like that's where they don't have enough votes to keep their their Mike Johnson's in or, or any of that, which I think he's already gone through a scandal by this time. So stay tuned. I, I feel like what I'm seeing is unprecedented. And that's why I can't quite put my finger on exactly what's happening. He's like, Trump's there, but he's he's not there. He's not allowed to be there, but he is there. You know, what's reality here? Um, so that's kind of how I'm figuring it. I think it's the split, this third party thing, but he he can't run like a, a normal candidate. And I, and I feel like that's basically what I was getting in that April reading. For Trump himself, like I said, he's he's trying to find a, a running mate. I did feel like it was a female and not because he's trying to get votes for females, but I feel like he can, from his perspective, he can dominate a female. I think at this point he feels a male running mate would be too threatening for him. Uh, he continues spewing his hate and announces ways he is going to cheat in the election out loud. I get ravings of a madman. I get the words madness, folly, clowns, jesters, dementia, and foolery. Then I saw Matt Gates with the jester's hat on. The Magra leadership has gathered around their leader, but they appear like mad clowns. I actually got a picture in my mind's eye of Pennywise from Stephen King's It. Now that scary clown with the balloon, he's in the sewers. Now I have never read or see, read the book It, and I have not seen the film. Because even though I'm a Stephen King fan, I've, saw, I've read some of his books, but that was just too scary for me. I have a wild imagination. It's just too much. So I kind of stay away from that genre when I can. But I did do a little looking and I heard, and, and for those of you who are big fans, please comment below so I can get more of a context. Pennywise sort of thrives on fear. Like fear is what keeps Pennywise going, um, which I thought was interesting because Trump also thrives on fear. I think maybe this symbol is more, not just his minions and how they've kind of gone off the deep end to madness, hence the scary clown faces. We've moved from entertainment to something darker, but we're also getting that symbolism that they're all trying to create chaos. They're trying to create fear because that's what they thrive on. Then I wrote, Trump is wreaking havoc through confusion. Trump has been weakened. He is bold, angry, and has nothing to lose at this point. I kind of went into his energy and I wrote, I am overwhelmed. And then I saw a cat cornered and hissing ready to strike you know when they go up and their their backs go up and they're like i got that and then i heard the expression the cat is out of the bag in one of his rants i believe trump is going to reveal something that should have been concealed so i feel like what they're saying is not only is he losing it, or he's pretending still to run, or he's whatever it is he's doing at this point, I get a sense that he's just acting like a cornered animal. And because he's sort of losing it a bit, I think he's gonna admit 
or reveal some sort of information that should have been a deep, dark secret to his grave kind of secret. In other words, he's incriminating himself. So even though there may be trial going on or there are trials that are still to come, I feel like he's literally admitting uh, what he's being charged with. That's what it felt like to me. I get coronary conditions during this time for Trump. Illness, and I get that he's not physically well. I remember when I saw that his physical and mental decline go together. So as he loses it mentally through stress and so forth, then his body starts to react in kind. It's a really strong possibility that Trump has a heart event in this month. And then I heard the word abuse of power. So if he's being accused or if there's some sort of verdict coming down or evidence of abuse of power seems to be the time in which his heart just can't take it. And he may be getting ill during this time. Again, this is for entertainment purposes only, but that's what I saw. I don't read death. So unless I can put it together in another context by information I get down the road that maybe he's just not there, they're not going to tell me if he crosses or not because I've blocked that information. It's just not something that um, I want to know about anyone that I'm reading about. I feel like that's up to God and the contract he has, the soul contracts he has. But I do um, get some serious issues with his health and his heart during this time. I wrote, I'm trying to break from confinement. I'm trying to find a way out. And then I hear the word banishment. Jack Smith, the knight rides. He will get the job done through force, perseverance and will. So when I saw that part, it really was like, I need to find a way out, banishment. And then you see like the knight riding. It was Jack Smith on the horse and he's riding, holding a flag, which was very interesting. He was holding a flag. It seemed very medieval to me. And he was kind of moving through, no matter what gets thrown at me, no matter what happens, I'm going to keep persevering step by step. I will get the job done. And that was the energy that was passing through my, my vision. I think the banishment, it's either one of two things. Either there's some sort of verdict in which he needs to stay away from certain things. Like you need to stay away from the presidential elections or you are confined in some way away from society. Or it could be symbolic of because of things going down during this time, I'm being banished or separated from my supporters. For sure, I feel a banishment from the Republican Party. And by that, I mean the traditional Republican Party. I do feel like that's a lot of what I saw, that they're making a decision. We don't want anything to do with him at this point. The final message is this. The shadow side of America emerges for all to see. Anger, vengeance, spite. Power is wielded unfairly. There is an abundance of hostility towards others. And this exposure gives way to light and healing. The fire burns. Could be the summer heat, the heat related to women, heat from the election. There emerges two Americas, one heart-centered, focused on unity and empathy. The other is dense, hot, and angry. By the end of June, most Americans are celebrating. I see a rainbow. It was a beautiful rainbow. There is good news here, joy and a lot of emotion, like a happy release. There is hope after a storm. I think about the rainbow being a covenant between God and Noah that he will never flood the world again. There is redemption here, healing after pain. Final, the final line was, be open to giving and receiving love. And that was the ending message for June. I felt once we got to the end of June, moving into July, rainbow. We're getting some winds. 
there's some winds here. There's, there's like we see light at the end of the tunnel, like the worst of the storm that we have been experiencing really since February is now calming down. The winds are calming down. And it's interesting, I had to look this up because as we move into July and August, we are moving into the conventions. And now we are moving deep into the election season where the rubber meets the road. I'm really looking forward to seeing how that plays out, how Trump is a part of this, if he's a part of this at all. Right now, if he's a candidate, he's not a traditional candidate and he is not getting much support at all. In fact, I get him weaker and I get him powerless. Things are going down for him and he is being confined. He is being strapped in control during this time. It is not going to be an easy time for Mr. Trump, but it is going to be a more hopeful time for us, the American people. And that is my June reading. I will begin working on my July reading and we'll see how that turns out. As always, it is a pleasure reading for you. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share my videos. Your support means so much to me. Thank you for all of the comments, the donations. It all helps me so much and I really appreciate it. So I will see you in my next video. Until then, bye-bye.